And that was it. That was really the straw that broke the camel's back. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down the bands or acts who had an infamous bandmate altercation during a live performance. If you're looking forward to Oasis, note that the Gallagher Brothers' partnership ending row was backstage. Number 10, The View. The View know how to energize a crowd with their uniquely hot-tempered indie rock. In May of 2023, tempers got too hot at a show in Manchester. A purported dispute culminated in bassist Kieran Webster kicking frontman Kyle Faulkner's mic stand. Audience footage shows Faulkner shoving Webster, then discarding his guitar to throw in some punches and kicks. It was the band's first performance in over five years and the show was going well until the lead singer Kyle Falkner lost his cool in the middle of the performance and pushed bassist Kieran Webster before trying to punch him. The band walking off the stage effectively ended the gig as well as a stop in London for their eventually salvaged tour. 2023 wound up being a violent year for disgruntled groups, including the Brian Jonestown Massacre. I've had enough death threats for one tour. The views clash set the proper tone with true shock horror. Number 9. Motorhead for all the wild stories about Lemmy Kilmister, his professional commitment led to Motorhead's most public meltdown. In 2011, the bassist and frontman was so sick the band considered canceling their appearance at the music festival Bloodstock. Lemmy insisted on powering through the outdoor show. You like rock and roll, don't you? As he struggled to keep up with the speed metal fury, he repeatedly ordered drummer Mickey D to slow down. D eventually got fed up and started throwing stuff at Lemmy. After the pair had time to cool down, the band played on. D now remembers it as the worst show he ever did with Motorhead. Lemmy's stubbornness was still better than no show at all for Bloodstock Metalheads. I don't believe a word. I don't believe a word. Number 8. Baby Shambles Pete Doherty built quite the reputation for mischief and more with the Libertines. And then there was his project Baby Shambles in action during a 2005 gig at London's Brixton Academy. Bye, oh bye, the way Doherty was already out on bail with charges of robbery and blackmail. He had to negotiate an extended curfew to attend a show so massive that audience members were crushing each other. As the band struggled to contain the frenzy, Doherty accidentally unplugged Patrick Walden's guitar. The pressure finally exploded in a skirmish between the bandmates. Thankfully, bouncers were quickly able to get the show back on track before Doherty got in more trouble with the law. <laughs> The incident still says a lot about his hot-headedness. Number 7. The Who It took The Who many hostile years to get their early concerts' intensity under control. Sometimes I feel I gotta get away. Bassist John Entwistle and drummer Keith Moon were in no condition to keep a 1966 Berkshire set civilized. The pair showed up late after drinking and jamming with the Beach Boys' Bruce Johnston all afternoon. They even jumped in mid-song after discovering that the band went on with a substitute rhythm section. By the time guitarist Pete Townsend took collateral damage during the show's explosive closer, a melee broke out. Entwistle and Moon decided that they had enough with the band, but thankfully changed their minds. The Who's unplanned blowout in Berkshire was still a wake-up call to get their chaotic act together. The kids are right. Number 6. Poison The hard-partying Poison are notorious for both their chemistry and their scrapes. Michaels and C.C. DeVille's volatile relationship has especially garnered attention since a backstage brawl at the 91 Video Music Awards. But the violence that an Atlanta audience caught in 2006 was between Michaels and Bobby Dahl. 
As the band prepared for an encore, things started to go haywire and the two exchanged words and a shove before Dahl swung his bass. Roadies were able to break up the fight before it got too carried away. Dahl has since claimed to not remember what instigated the incident. It was reportedly bad enough for Michaels to announce that the concert may have been Poison's last, but by all accounts, the band has survived worse. Every rose has its thorn. Number 5. The Jesus and Mary Chain Noise pop pioneers and brothers, the Jesus and Mary Chain are also known for their noisy conflicts. This culminated in 1998 when Jim Reed came drunk to his show in LA's House of Blues. As he grew more belligerent and knocked over equipment, William Reed tried to put him in his place. The brothers' violent quarrel ended the performance after just 15 minutes and prompted William to drop out of the tour altogether. The incident would be the catalyst for the band's formal split the following year. The Reed brothers eventually reconciled in 2007, and the Jesus and Mary chain have been going strong ever since. Though they've thankfully been able to forgive, fans can't forget their legendary falling out. Number 4. The Beatles the international brand of some boys from Liverpool truly began with their residency in Hamburg, Germany. How uh, Hamburg came about was I had a group working there already and the Beatles had no money. But it was also infamously the end of their musical relationship with bassist Stuart Sutcliffe. He got engaged to local Astrid Kirchher after a two-month courtship. The couple didn't even speak a common language. He was so enthusiastic about life and, you know, the knowledge of life. And that was very, very attractive. The band teased Sutcliffe for his relationship and other things, especially Paul McCartney. This supposedly led to the onstage altercation that had been a long time coming for him and Sutcliffe. The fight factored into Sutcliffe's decision to leave the Beatles to focus on his art career. With McCartney on bass, the band went on to become one of the biggest acts in music history. Meanwhile, Sutcliffe tragically died from a brain hemorrhage in 1962, still engaged to cure here. He held me and then he just, you know, slipped back and that was when he died. Number 3. Marilyn Manson as shocking as Marilyn Manson's concerts and behavior are, his 2003 appearance at Rock'em Ring took a turn which surprised everyone. <laughs> Professional footage shows Manson marching along the stage until he accidentally kicks John Five in the head. The ensuing frenzy nearly came to blows when John tossed his guitar aside. Though the two quickly got their bearings, fans would spend 20 years referencing the fight in rumors that John left Manson's band with bad blood. In a 2022 interview, the guitar virtuoso finally revealed that he had recently learned of his sister's sudden passing and took full responsibility for what he did in his state of grief. Given the circumstances, nobody is holding his meltdown against him. Number 2. The Kinks The feud between brothers Ray and Dave Davis is legendary. Oh, yeah, you really got me but while they were able to stay civil on stage, Mick Avery led the Kinks' most consequential fight. Dave had been on his case leading up to and during a 1965 gig at Cardiff's Capitol Theatre. When Davis kicked Avery's drum kit, Avery knocked him unconscious with a hi-hat stand. He then fled from what he thought was a murder scene while Davis was rushed to the infirmary. Your road manager was reported as saying, though, that trouble had been brewing up within the group for some time. Is there any truth in that? No, it's no tension. When word of this and other incidents reached the United States, the Kinks were banned just in time for the British invasion. The band's popularity and influence thankfully secured them independent stardom, but they were nearly undone by the kind of hostility witnessed at the Capitol Theater. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Eagles. The Eagles were one of the biggest rock bands of the 1970s. In the city. This pressure escalated the group's artistic and personal conflicts into a lengthy recording session for the long run. There were a lot of things building up and a lot of things I tried to overlook for the good of the band and ultimately I just couldn't look past some of this anymore. And it festered because we didn't talk about these things. The album's title took on an ironic meaning after its 1980 promotional tour detoured to a charity gig at Long Beach. Don Felder and Glenn Fry exchanged threats and swipes throughout the set, sometimes deliberately into the microphone. You know, and I'm looking at him and I am ready to go. I can't wait to get my hands on him. As soon as the show ended, Felder smashed his guitar backstage and quit on the spot. The rest of the band soon followed. After a long hiatus, the Eagles would spend the following decades reuniting and breaking up. Get over it. Get over it. Still, their very public first breakup ranks among the most devastating ever witnessed. What are your favorite band battles? Let us know in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.